Hi, my loves. How are you? Today, we are going to dive into all things egg quality. So, if you have questions about egg quality, you can ask them and I will answer them. And I'm also going to share with you tips simple things that we can do now to optimize egg quality. And I also have a really special bonus for you. It's free and it's a shit ton of information on improving your egg quality. So you don't want to miss out on that. Okay. Okay. Everybody cares about their egg quality. Everybody. Every single woman I talk to is cares about their egg quality and what they can do to improve it. Here's the thing about egg quality. Egg quality is a direct representation of overall cellular health in your body. Egg quality declines due to oxidative stress, due to the environment, the environment due to aging, aging before our time. And what we now know, and it's scientifically proven, this is not just an Amy-ism, although I see it clinically all the time and I'm so happy now that there's data behind it, is that we can actually improve the quality of our eggs as we get older. Yes, we can get better, we can get healthier, we can improve cellular function, we can optimize the quality of every single cell in our body, even the ones in our eggs, I'm sorry, in our ovaries, <laughs> as we age. I have case after case after case of this showing up in the clinic. I have had women in their mid to late 30s not be able to create genetically normals and then they they do some of these tips that we're gonna talk about today. They dive into my book, The Egg Quality Diet, Duh, I wrote a whole book about egg quality, right? Because I've seen it just improve so much for so many. And then they could be in their mid 40s and they're making healthy babies all of a sudden. That's because what they did was they reduced inflammation in their body. They turned around this accelerated aging process in their body. And what they really did to me, what is at the root of improving egg quality is improving nutrient absorption. And how you improve nutrient absorption is you take the load off of the body in all the other ways because so much of what fertility is and improving fertility and um, it's not a hocus pocus and it's not um, magic. It's actually scientific. What you do to improve fertility and egg quality is you enhance the way the body functions. You enhance the way the body absorbs its nutrition. You take off the stressful burdens on the body so the body can focus and prioritize pregnancy and fertility. You shift the body out of fight or flight mode and into rest, relax, and reproduce mode. And you create a healthier environment. You create healthier eggs. This is all doable. There's a whole world of science out there now on anti-aging medicine. And that's what this falls into. This is the category it falls into. So yes, if you want like the in-depth conversation on this, go over to amyrop.com slash egg course, E-G-G-C-O-U-R-S-E. I'm not even gonna wait to tell you because it's so exciting. Sign up for my free mini e-course where you're gonna get the seven ways to improve the quality of your eggs. And it's like really juicy information. You get this 36 page PDF, five videos from me, a bonus video. It's all entirely free because that's my jam. I love to be of service to all of you. And every time I learn something new, I bring it to you. So you, you can only sign up until tomorrow, Friday, 9-16, September 16th. And then after that, you will not get access to this course. Even if you can't watch it right away, you will have access to the videos for about two weeks, but you cannot enroll after tomorrow. So if you are like, oh, I want that information, but I can't look at it this week or I'm slammed this week at work, enroll. 
get the videos and watch them. You have until um, almost like the end of September, basically, I'm forgetting the date, um, to watch the videos. But you can't enroll after tomorrow. So today I'm gonna cover things that I don't cover in the video series because I don't wanna be redundant and I want you to get the most out of the video series, okay? So today, and then also a lot of you loved my reels the last couple of days. I did a reel on the five things that are damaging your egg quality. So I wanna highlight those and then kind of give you what you should be doing, right? So do I remember all of them? Number one thing that was damaging your egg quality was skipping meals. And I would also add to that having coffee on an empty stomach. So what's the alternative to that? not skipping meals. And when you have your coffee, add a scoop of collagen peptides to it, add some grass-fed ghee or coconut oil, make it have fat and protein. What we see as a major impact on hormones and on fertility and on longevity for women in their reproductive years, and your reproductive years in, in accordance with Chinese medicine go all the way up until the age of 49, is that maintaining blood sugar balance throughout the day is absolutely critical for healthy hormones and therefore healthy egg quality. Yes. Another thing that many do that is damaging to their egg quality is they go low fat. So if you sign up for the free course, amyrop.com slash egg course, I really go deep on diet. And again, you get this 36 page PDF. You're gonna get a lot of information. What is going on? Okay, someone comment. Okay, so I think I'm back. Um, am I back, am I back, am I back? Because a phone call just came through and I don't wanna lose you guys. Let's see, someone comment so I can see that I am still live and it is still working. Okay, um, yes, okay, thank you guys. So what was I saying? Right, the, the mini course that I'm giving away for free based on my 20 years of clinical experience, based on my own ability to get pregnant naturally in my 40s, uh, based on the fact that I've helped women up until the age of 48 create genetically normal embryos. Um, and 47, pregnant naturally with healthy baby. I know a thing or two about egg quality. So I'm gonna give you this free course with all the nitty gritty details. So go and sign up for that because after tomorrow you can't sign up for it. But one thing I wanna to talk to you about today is going low fat. Fat, cholesterol, choline, cholesterol rich foods like eggs, bone broth, meat, grass-fed, good quality meat is at the top of the hormone chain. If you are not eating enough fat, your egg quality is not gonna be where it's at. You're gonna suffer. You need good quality fats in your diet. I recommend upwards of two tablespoons of a good quality fat every single day, plus at least two eggs a day, plus some bone broth. Mm-hmm. And I never see cholesterol go up in any of my clients, by the way. In fact, it goes down most of the time because cholesterol, when it's high, is a side effect of refined vegetable oils in processed packaged foods. It's a sign of inflammation in the body. Another big thing that is damaging your egg quality, and I get into this in the egg course, so I'm just gonna brush it over right here, is sleep and not getting enough of it. I go into deeper tips on sleep, how to get more sleep, how to improve the quality of your sleep in the free course. So go check that out. The videos will start dropping on Saturday. So go sign up today. The last day to sign up is tomorrow. Videos start dropping on Saturday. Again, you're gonna get five videos plus a bonus video plus an incredible PDF. Um, what else did I say in that reel? What were the other things that I said? Did you guys watch the reel that were damaging your egg quality? Do you guys remember? So it was skipping meals, having coffee on an empty stomach, going low fat, not sleeping enough. Does anybody else remember what the other two things were? Quizzing you guys. Waiting for just someone to comment. Anybody remember what else could be damaging to your egg quality? No? 
Okay. Apparently, you guys didn't watch the reel. Um, other things, veggies. There you go, girl. Thank you, Lucia. Um, not getting enough veggies. So I see Food Diaries like it's my job because it is my job. And I have been looking at Food Diaries for decades because that's a big thing I do when I work with clients. I collect their Food Diaries. And everyone always says to me, I'm following the diet. I'm doing all the things. Doing all the things. Still like getting pregnant, you know, still not making healthy embryos. And then I look and they're basically having three servings of vegetables a day. We got to get it up, guys. Everybody's like, what antioxidants? And I'm going to talk about antioxidants. What antioxidants do I take for egg quality? Well, guess what the best antioxidant is for egg quality? Vegetables. Cooked primarily in a healthy fat so you can absorb them better. But vegetables. Other antioxidants that I love, a little sneak peek into some supplements, CoQ10. Everybody knows it's great for improving egg quality. Also really love the research on NAD. Um, I like it. There's, all my recommended supplements are on my website under recommended supplements. You go over there and you're gonna see my recommended supplements. But um, I like Reserva Cell by Thorne, which is I think the best NAD supplement that's on the market right now. Another supplement that I really love for improving egg quality. Sure, acai is a good one. I see someone commented acai. Acai is a good one, and Dr. Schoolcraft out at CCRM in Colorado has a lot of research on that. I think you could get away with any antioxidant, though, that will help improve because these are all antioxidant powerhouses. So acai is a food, right? So thinking about eating antioxidant-rich foods. One of my favorites is um, organ meats really, really powerful um, fertility boosters and egg quality boosters. Um, NAD IV infusions. So I think the, the jury's still out on um, whether or not you need them. I think taking it in pill form seems to be just as effective. If you have the ability and you don't have bad reactions to it, perhaps it's something to explore. Um, I have read that there can be negative side effects to high doses of NAD that it actually can have a negative effect. Um, and so I want to just see, I feel like I did say you guys could ask some questions and I think some came through in the beginning and I feel like I didn't. Um, questions have to pertain to egg quality though. Um, okay, NAD infusions, I just answered that. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, Okay, didn't know coffee on an empty stomach messed up my eggs. Yes, it does. Um, what about Primal Kitchen matcha and chia latte on an empty stomach? So as long as there's protein and fat, it's not an empty stomach. Um, does that make sense? So if your latte has protein and fat, you're good. Yes. Um, I put bone broth, grass-fed butter, and coconut oil on my organic coffee every morning. You rock on, Rachel. Um and oh thank you guys um what is the link one more time please so amyraup.com slash egg as in eggs egg -G, course and again free video series five part video series with a bonus video a 30 some odd page pdf a shit ton of information on what you can do to improve your egg quality enrollment closes tomorrow though you cannot get in after tomorrow and if you guys email me on Saturday and say, I missed the enrollment, can I get access to the videos? The answer is going to be no. So you are all adults. You go and you log in now and you register for the course. I love you guys, but no. My team gets so many emails after things like this where they're like, I missed the enrollment. Too bad. I'm sorry. I love you. You've had plenty of opportunity. You can sign up today. You can sign up tomorrow up until midnight. Um, and let's see not connecting with your body, um, blood sugar. Good job. Intermittent fasting is not a good idea then. No, it doesn't seem to work well for women and hormones and fertility. Menopausal women, different story, but when you're still actively trying to conceive, no. Stress. Good job, Lucia. Spicer, exercise, oxidized food, stress, plastic. So I think that's a good one. I didn't actually mention that in the in the video, the, the reel I did the other day, but on my notes here today to talk about environmental toxins. 
someone I did an interview last night and someone asked me like, and someone, I get this question a lot. So like, what do you think is like one of the biggest things impacting a woman's fertility and her egg quality? And also what impacts egg quality? Like I was saying in the beginning is oxidative stress. When there's more oxidative stress, we age prematurely. Our cells, there's basically like these free radicals, these scavengers, they call them in the body, and they disrupt cellular division and they disrupt egg quality, along with all other cells in your body become very um, <clears throat> fragile and um, erratic. And it's just not a good environment. It's a highly inflammatory environment. So environmental toxins is usually my answer when people are like, why do you think there's so many fertility challenges right now? And I'm like, well, since the 80s, we've introduced over 100,000 chemicals into our environment. And these chemicals are all known as endocrine disrupting chemicals. And what that means is they disrupt your hormones. So going non-toxic with bath beauty is so important. Going non-toxic with any like household cleaners, going non-toxic with your foods. And I really dive into the food piece in the egg course, so I'm not gonna dive into it here, but plastic is a great example of something that we should all avoid. I drink out of these all day long. Glass, mason jars, filtered water. That's another really important thing. So these are really like what I think we would consider, not low level, like high impact, simple changes. Sleep more, eat more fat, what else? <laughs> Eat more veggies. Filter your water. Drink out of glass. Don't skip meals. Don't have caffeine on an empty stomach. These are very low, simple, I was going to say again, simple things, simple shifts that we can do that have extremely high impact on the overall function of not just our hormones and not just our egg quality, but our overall health and vitality. If you want to continue to improve your fertility as you age, you really need to care about optimizing the aging process, optimizing vitality, and that means reducing inflammation, reducing environmental toxin exposures, nourishing your body, and I think most importantly, slowing down. We got to get ourselves out of that fight or flight mode and into that rest, relax, and reproduce mode. Now, another thing that I didn't mention in the post the other day is acupuncture. So I am an acupuncturist and herbalist. Acupuncture is so amazing for improving across the board. And... It improves blood flow and circulation. It'll improve blood flow and circulation to the ovaries and the uterus. And when you do that, get pause due to poor connection. Are we back? So when you improve. Things we can do. Getting acupuncture and using castor oil on your. Okay, am I back? Am I back? Pause due to poor connection. That's what my phone kept saying. So I went into my settings and just um, put on do not disturb. I don't know if that made a difference. But I see people coming back on. So I'm thinking I am live again. But I will, still frozen, still freezing. Okay, well, I couldn't see any of these comments when I was frozen. So um, I did say getting acupuncture for egg quality is good. Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, yeah. My video kept freezing, um, sorry. Okay, so here we go. I did the egg quality diet for a year. My labs are all normal, super low inflammation, and my last round of IVF still yielded abnormal embryos, so defeated. So in that case, A, that sucks, and I'm sorry. In that case, you have to look at the medications. You're probably on too high of a dose of meds, too high menopure, too high stims. Those will compromise egg quality. Um, especially if you're in your 40s, then you need low dose because your eggs are not bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna argue this. This is medication, or it's sperm. 
you got to look at sperm health too. If sperm health has not been improved, if if your partner, if you're in a partnership with a male, has not been working on his diet and his lifestyle, that could be part of it. Um, but when I see cases like this, it is nine times out of 10, it's too much medication. So um, reassess or try a different doctor. Uh, okay, so did she say getting acupuncture for egg quality is good? I did. I did. Why? Because it improves circulation and blood flow. So AMH, this is a perfect example. AMH is secreted by the ovaries. AMH can be low and then we'll, we'll, we're told that we have low ovarian reserve and we're also told that that likely means we have poor egg quality, which by the way, there's no evidence to, to correlate low ovarian reserve with poor egg quality, but they say it for some reason. Um, and when we improve circulation and blood flow, either with acupuncture or with, uh, I love castor oil on the abdomen, either using gua sha or castor oil packs. Um, those are two great ways to improve blood flow to the ovaries. Also, my abdominal massage or Avrigo abdominal massage is another amazing way to improve blood flow to the ovaries and the uterus. You will see AMH improve and you will see egg quality improve because it's all about getting juicy, healthy blood flow to those tissues. They will perform better. Um, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Can castor oil work with autoimmune issues like colitis? Yeah. I'll use it for GI issues. I'll use it if there's liver, gallbladder stones. Um, you guys are so good. Uh, just started acupuncture. I was on the highest 41. So that's it. Um, I want you to go back to your doctor or find a doctor that does mini IVF or low stim IVF and try that way, my love. Not saying that my diet does it doesn't, I can't guarantee a pregnancy for every single person, right? But I've just been doing this long enough that if you're doing all the things and you have low inflammation, um, it's either sperm or meds or a combination of both. And so, yeah, do prescription medications like hypertension affect egg quality? You know, I would think about prescription medications, especially ones for cholesterol, because they reduce your ability to absorb fats and certain they leave you nutrient deficient, especially in B12 and D. Those will definitely impact egg quality. A hypertension, it depends on if you're on a beta blocker or if you're on a um, diuretic. The diuretics, I think more likely would impact quality. How long do I need acupuncture for egg quality? Some of the more recent studies do show that consistent acupuncture leading up to IVF or getting pregnant is beneficial. So three months of acupuncture, ideally weekly, is gonna make the difference. Is bet less medication better for low AMH? Yes, it is. What about Chinese herbs? Yes, I am an herbalist and that was also on my list and that's not, I don't talk about that so much in the video course and I didn't talk about that in the reels, but 100%. Chinese herbs do the same thing. They're going to help improve nutrient absorption. They're going to help improve circulation and blood flow. They're going to nourish your body from the inside out. We don't have things like estrogen or progesterone or AMH or FSH in Chinese medicine. Those things don't exist. We have blood, chi, and essence. And herbs help all of those things. And those are the three vital substances that we need plenty of to make a baby. Um... Okay, um, can you put castor oil in a silicone hot pack? I don't know about that. I don't know what a silicone hot pack is, but you don't put it inside. You put the castor oil on your abdomen. I have a whole video on it. Just Google Amy Raup and the words castor oil, and you will see all the information on when to do it, where to do it, how to do it, all the things. Yep, so I'm not going to answer that question. Uh, artificial sweeteners are harmful to hormones and fertility across the board, so I would not use Splenda. Can nutrition improve AMH? It sure as fuck can. Um, would you suggest castor oil during, okay, I'm going to make you go to the video. All the castor oil questions, I want you guys, when we hang up here, Amy Ralph and castor oil. You're going to Google those words and you're going to see my video. Um, what about fresh veggie juice as an extra serving? You can do that and I do do that sometimes. I do have like an 80-20 rule of raw, cold veggies over cooked. So, um... Add ginger and turmeric and cinnamon, if you can, to the veggie mix. That will warm it up a little bit. I also try to drink mine at room temperature instead of cold. So if you're getting it like freshly pressed at a juice place, it's not going to be cold, which is kind of perfect. And then ask them to add ginger to kind of warm it up and help with digestion. Um, doesn't me create more inflammation? Um, so no, that's a big level of, it's a huge 
misinformed uh, comment. And not by you. I don't mean that you're misinformed. Well, you... It, it, how do I, I... I'm like using the words wrong. It, that's not the correct information is what I would say. The research that's done on meat is only done on commercial meat, like factory farmed meat, and it is highly inflammatory and I'd never recommend eating it. It has high levels of omega-6. It's also loaded with, like the, the animals are eating corn and soy, very inflammatory foods, and they tend to have infections, all of that. Do not, I do not recommend factory farmed meat whatsoever. When we, when we do research on grass-fed, pastured animal meats, we see there's a higher level of omega-3. They're much less inflammatory. And then also when meat is eaten in a diet that is coupled with six to eight servings of vegetables, absolutely not, not inflammatory whatsoever. Um, yeah, so do herbs interact with Hashimoto's? It just depends. Work with a good herbalist. You know, I went to um, Chinese medicine school. Uh, I have a four-year master's level degree. I've also studied with a master herbalist for, for many years. Um, so you want to work with someone who really understands Chinese herbs and interactions after COVID, do you have to wait three months to do another round of IVF? Um, so I did recently just hear this, that it can have impact egg quality and sperm quality. And so if you were severely impacted by COVID, meaning very, very, very sick from the COVID infection, I think I would wait to fully recover at least two to three months. Um, Ovarian PRP is also another good way. There is some data to show it, it improves egg quality. It's not like fully vetted data at this point, but it definitely helps improve ovarian blood flow, which we can then make the assumption it would help improve quality. Um, okay, I'm 43, metformin, 2000, he is healthy but smokes marijuana. So marijuana can definitely impact sperm health. So I would I would think about that if we could get a break in marijuana. Sperm turns over pretty quickly, but also put him on good antioxidants. I have a whole, um, I've done videos before on YouTube on healthy daddy diet. So go and search that on my YouTube channel and watch that. Um, sugar is definitely, sugar is inflammatory and so not good for egg health. Not good for anybody's health on a regular basis, right? Um... Okay, so yeah, all questions should pertain to egg quality. So there are no tests for egg quality, unfortunately. The only test is, is either we're making genetically normal embryos, we're getting pregnant with healthy babies. Those are the tests. Um, and fertilization, I think, tells us something too. Um, I'm on 300 gonal and 150 men of pure and responding very well, but now I'm worried. So let's just see. We're in this cycle. Let's just see. You could always talk to your doctor about cutting back now if you're responding well like cutting those doses in half and see or we see um how the cycle goes and if it doesn't go the way you want it to go then i strongly urge you go back in and produce meds to help with egg quality um so would you rather no i still recommend a lot of fish um seven to twelve servings of fish a week you know, and a little less on the meat front. So I still recommend more fish than meat, but I still recommend meat and I still recommend a lot of eggs and I still recommend a lot of vegetables. So it is kind of a Mediterranean diet, but with meat. Um, okay, so again, what to, this is not really about egg quality. So about eating out that you can address in my book, The Egg Quality Diet. There's an incredible resources page that goes with that book that gives a lot of information here. I'd also recommend signing up for the egg course because I really get into diet and how to kind of navigate those things in that free course. Again, you can only sign up until tomorrow and then you do not have the option to see those videos again. They go away. You're not, they're not available to you. So amyrop.com slash egg course, you're going to get a five part video series, the seven ways to better quality eggs. And you get an incredible PDF and a bonus video. Yes. Go sign up amyrop.com slash egg course. And I'm going to, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Amy covers sweeteners in her books. Um, okay. I, I'm not going to answer about almost 16 because it's not about egg quality. Okay, so, but think about inflammation. Inflammation is the number one reason that quality is compromised. It's not just chronological years old. 
It's how much inflammation in your body, how much oxidative stress, and also what I would say, how much burden is on your body with all the other chemicals and stress and emotions you're exposed to. And that's, it's about creating that safety in the body that will then allow fertility and egg quality to thrive. So join the mini e-course for free, for free. It's a lot of material and it's all for free. It's based on my 20 years of experience, literally helping thousands of women. My best-selling books, lots of information in there. amyrop.com slash egg course, E-G-G-C-O-U-R-S-E. You have, to, you have today and tomorrow to enroll. After that, enrollment closes and you cannot get access to these videos. I love you. I will see you later.